room looks. Fabulous. I told you it would. I wish we could always have it like this. Oh, that lamp looks divine there. And those chairs are just the right color. I told you that it would look good in here. Well, suppose Harold comes back tonight? Oh, he'll be back until tomorrow morning. Well, I know, darling, but you just don't understand. Harold, he's crazy about his furniture. What do you think he'll say if he comes back and sees we've stolen all of them? Don't dramatize. We haven't stolen all his furniture. Just the three chairs, the sofa, the table, the lamp, the bowl, and the vase of flowers, that's all. <laughs> and the Buddha? That's more valuable than any of this. Oh, do stop worrying, darling. Well, I just can't. Look, you don't understand, Harold. He's crazy about his antiques. He won't even let anyone touch them. Look, we'll put everything back as soon as Miss Baumberger leaves. Now stop being a jerk. Well, I don't think we should have done it. I mean, Harold or no. Well, why not, for heaven's sake? This place looks divine now. Just look at it. Darling, Yvonne Baumberger is a multi-millionaire. She's lived her life against this sort of furniture. She's not going to be impressed by our few stolen bits. If you ask me, she's coming to see the work of an unknown sculptor. I think it would touch her heart if she saw me as I truly was, a poor artist. Well, it might, but it certainly won't impress Daddy. Remember, he's coming, too. Oh, as if I could forget why you had to invite your monster father tonight? I can't even begin to think. Oh, not again. Well, it's just too bloody much, Carol. If he's going to be persuaded that I'm a fit husband for you, just by seeing some famous collector look at my work, I don't think he deserves to have me as a son-in-law. He just wants to prove he can earn your own living. What if Barbara doesn't like my work? She will, darling. Just stop worrying. I can't. Now go get me a whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> Got a poor voting, Carol. It's all going to be a disaster. An A1, copper bottom, 24 karat disaster. The trouble with you is you're what Daddy calls a DD. A determined defeatist. The more I hear about your daddy, the more I hate him. I loathe military men anyways, and he's bound to hate me. Look, darling, all you've got to do is stand up to him. Daddy's only a bully when you think people are afraid of him. Well, I am. <laughs> you haven't even met him. Well, that doesn't make any difference. I'm a complete physical coward. He'll smell it on my breath. That's ridiculous. Here. Thanks. What can he do for you? <laughs> Thing. You can refuse to let me marry you. Oh, that's sweetie poo. Oh, I like you green. It goes with your hair. Straighten your tie. You look sloppy poo. Well, you look divine. Really? Oh, yes. I mean it. I've never seen you look so lovely. <laughs> Tell me something, Bryn. Were there many before me? Thousands. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. None. Oh, well, what about that girl in the photo? Oh, she lasted a couple of months. Oh, when? About two years oh, ago. What was her name? It was Clea. Well, what was she like? She was a painter. Very honest, very clever, and just about as cozy as a steel razor blade. Well, then why did I find her photo in your friend's room drawer? <laughs> it was just there, darling. That's all. Uh, now give me a kiss. No one in the world kisses like you do. Come tell me something, Bryn. Did you like it better with her or me? Like what? Sexy poo. Look, darling, there's going to be oh. people here any minute, so you better put a record on. Hey, it better be something for your father. What is he even like? Oh, well, he doesn't like anything except military marches. Oh, I might have guessed. Wait, I think I've got some. It's, it's that one on top. That's right, and it's called Marching and Murdering with Sousa or something. Land of the Cold Street Guards. I do. Now put it on. How do you switch on? Oh, it's, it's the last knob on the left? That's it, okay. Now make sure it's plugged in. All right. Let us pray. Dear God, let this evening go all right. Let Miss Bobberger like my work. Let Carol's monster father like me. And let Harold Gore never find that I stole off with all of his bits. Oh, we must have blown a fuse. Where's the box? It's, it's in the hallway. Have you any candles? Um, I don't think so. Oh, where are the matches? I think they're 
here on this drinks table. No. Hey, try that bloody flare. <laughs> Hello? 
Operator, London Electricity Board, please. Night service. Well, yes, ma'am, I'm sure it's in the book, but I'm afraid I just can't see. Oh, no, 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 no need to apologize. I'm not blind, I, I just can't see. Look, you've had a mains fuse blown. Why, no, we haven't got any matches. Thank you. London is staffed with imbeciles. <laughs> oh, you're so right, Mr. Miller. Hello? Well, yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm sure you could give me the number, but I'm afraid I can't dial it. Well, have you ever tried to dial a number in the dark? Look, ma'am, I just want to be connected. Thank you. Oh, uh, Miss Furnival, do you by any chance have any candles? I'm afraid not, Mr. Miller. Hello? Yes, I'd like to report a main fuse at 18 Scarlatti Gardens. My name is Miller. Well, yes. Yes. Okay. I see. Okay. Hold on. Hold bloody on. If I might suggest Harold Goring opposite might have some candles. He's away for the weekend, but always sleeps his key on that. Oh, that's a great idea. That's just the sort of practical thing he would have. Here, Carol, you take this. I'll go and see. <laughs> Not to me. 
set of early Christians. <laughs> what did you say, sir? Oh. Nothing, sir. Candles, matches, torches. Very good. Uh, now, where might you find any of those things at this time of night? I haven't the faintest of ideas. Oh, the pub, of course. You have a pub close by, haven't you? Oh, well, yes, sir. I spend all of my time there. <laughs> my time. A little bit of my time. Ten minutes of my time a day at the most. Don't be closed yet, if you hurry. Thank you, sir. Your clarity of mind has saved the day. Well, get on with it, ma'am. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back in a minute. Oh, good luck, darling. Oh, thank you, my sweet. Brinsley! <laughs> oh, it's Harold. He's back. Brinsley, what's going on? The furniture. Harold, Harold, uh, don't go in there. Come in here. What's going on, Brinsley? Oh, we've blown a main fuse master box. Uh, Call the electrician, though. So, you're back from your weekend? Oh, yes, some weekend I had. It rained the whole bloody time. Oh, well, you can just have a drink, relax, and tell us all about it. Us? Who's here, then? I am Mr. Goring. Oh, Bernie. <laughs> Taking refuge, I'm afraid. You know how I do in the dark. Oh, blasted thing. Oh, there we are. I, I say. Who are you? <laughs> oh, this this is my neighbor, Harold Goring. Uh, Harold Goring, uh, Mr. Colonel Melkett. How do you? How do you do? Uh, Miss, Miss Carol Melkett. Hello. How about I take your cape, Harold? Be careful, it's sobbing wet. You've got no candles, I suppose? I don't, silly me. What the devil did you do that for? Oh, well, <laughs> Colonel, it's, it's dark, terribly dark, and uh, your wood is failing fast. You may need it later, I'm saving it. Here, I got some matches. Let's just hope I have the right end. <laughs> what was that? Oh, that that was just a draft. <laughs> you know, no candle or match can stay lit in here uh, because of cross currents. Well, let's try again then. What did you do that for? Uh, no reason. <laughs> you have a dead body in here or something? Of course not, Harold. <laughs> it's, it's just that uh, it's very dangerous. Very dangerous for us to be in here. Deeply dangerous. We could all die, actually. Die? Oh, yes. It's something they warn you about old houses. You know, the, the master fuse box and the gas line are very close together, and it's terribly dangerous to have any open flames when one goes out. Ah, uh, so what about it? Oh, well, uh, whenever the master fuse box is blown, it damages the gas supply, which then releases into the house, so any open flame could cause a major explosion. It's, it's terribly, <coughs> dreadfully dangerous. I've never heard that. Me neither. Why, it's, it's absolutely true. Right, Carol? Oh, yes. Well, friend's absolutely right. In fact, they warned me about it on the phone earlier. They said, whatever you do, don't strike a match till the fuse is lit. It's dreadfully, dreadfully dangerous. You couldn't imagine how dreadfully. Oh, there. Now you see. Oh, then why didn't you warn me, Dumpling? Oh, I... I... I forgot. <laughs> no brilliance. Oh, we must take care. We certainly must. <laughs> How about we all have a drink to cheer us up? Yeah, so it's in that optimum message of the night I've had. Oh, 30 people in that compartment, there was one. Babes and arms, two toddlers, three yapping boodles, and not a sausage to eat from leanings into London. Excuse me, I may go clean up. Oh, you can do that here. Oh, I must unpack it anyways. Uh, no nonsense, Harold. You just stay here and relax with us. Well, there's one thing I can't stand, it's Cree's suit. No, Harold, that's complete nonsense. We know how you are in the dark, and you're going to knock yourself out within ten minutes. <laughs> so just stay here and relax with us. Carol, why don't you pour our guest a drink? You're in a bossy mood, I must say. The darkness must bring out the dominant in you. What will you have, Mr. Goring? A Winnie, Vera, or Jeanette? Come again. Oh, you know, Winnie whiskey, Vera vodka, or dear old standby Jeanette. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the same to you, uh, Jeanette. Do you have a glass, please? Young man, why do you keep reminding you of your in an emergency? You have a guest arriving any moment. Oh, why, yes, sir. I forgot. Try the pub. All the neighbors, try who you damn well please, sir, but get some light. 
Yes, sir. Carola, could I have a word with you? I'm here. Oh, what is it now? Oh, Colonel, look. You see, we're, we're just, uh, we have some business to resolve. Oh, Mr. Goring, you'll never guess who's coming here tonight. Who? Guess. The Queen. Oh, good heavens, no. The Prime Minister. Oh, you are ridiculous, no. Is that boy touched or what? Touched? Well, he's a lollipop. A what? An absolute sweetie. I've known him ever since he moved in here. There's not many secrets you keep from each other, I can tell you. Really? Well, look, I'm just going to have to put all of Harold's things back right now. In the dark? Well, yes, darling. There's no other way. Well, come on, Bernie. Don't be a tease. Who is that's coming tonight? Ah, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's someone with... Money. Money? Let me think. Carol! Um, look, can't you just tell him it was a joke? Well, no. Look, you don't understand. You just don't know Harold. He's mad about his antiques. It's bad enough in his china shop. The things he keeps at home are absolutely sacred. Do you want him to call me a thief right in front of your father? Because that's exactly what he'll do. Uh, Brinsley! Look, you just, you don't know Harold. He'll turn into a math killer inside ten seconds. Well, how on earth can we, get, can we do it? We can't get all those things out in the dark and put your things back without anyone knowing. It's impossible. Well, now who's being the DD, darling? Brinsley, what are you two doing up there? It's no use, Colonel. You can't hear a thing in that bedroom. Now look. <laughs> <laughs> Just serve them drinks. Keep things going, okay? I'll get everything back as it were. You can't. It's impossible. Brinsley! Look, darling, you do your part, I'll do mine. Who oh, get down here, Miller! <laughs> Why, yes, sir. Uh, I was just getting some empty bottles to take back to the pub. Say what you like. That boy is I'll be on my way now. Well, hurry the top, man. Look, Carol will serve you drinks, and if our guest arrives, explain the whole situation. <laughs> uh, no. You just stay here and dry out those sobbing wet clothes. A nice dinner mine will do you wonders. I won't be gone too long, everyone. Goodbye. Uh, well, now, drinks. It's Jeanette for Mr. Goring, and I suppose Winnie for Daddy. And I guess I'll have a nice glass of Vera in time. Wait. How on earth are you going to do all of that in the dark? Oh, I remember the exact way I put out the bottles. It's very simple. Here, hold on. So let me strike a match. I'm sure it won't hurt for just a minute. What are you trying to do, Mr. Goring? Blow us all up? All poor Miss Bomber would find would be teensy weensy bits of us. Very, very messy. Bomber! Is that who's coming tonight? Yvonne Bomber? Yes, she's coming to see some of Brizzy's artwork. Well, I never. I read an article about her last week in the Sunday paper. She's known as a mystery millionaire. She's almost dead, dead as a post. She spends most of her time alone indoors with her collection. If I had the money, that's what I'd do. Spend all of my money and time on for something. I've always imagined millionaires feel different to us. I mean, their actual skins. Their <laughs> skins? Yes, skins like the women when I was a girl, Colonel. What an interesting idea. She's very fanciful, Miss Bernie. I've always said she could have been a writer. Oh, you're so generous with your confidence. <laughs> but this is by no means fancy. In my day, softness of skins was a sign of refinement. Nowadays, us middle classes can hardly keep ourselves decently clothed, let alone soft. Yes, refinement. That word you just used, it's thrown to the dogs. Now people, when they hear it, they use the word that they use as something that's probably cold, fat, you know. Now when they hear it, they think it's something such a charming word, too. Refinement. I'll tell you the truth, dear. You and I are never going to be that word spoken properly ever again. People don't care anymore. They don't give a damn. Well, they just don't give a damn. My father always used to say before the bomb spell, learned our little house of windows. The game's up, my girl. A middle class is or as dead as the dodo. How right he was. Your father was a professional man? Oh, he was a man of God, Colonel. Oh. Uh, how are those drinks coming, Dumpling? Uh, 
Fine, Daddy, help me one minute. Can I help you? Well, you can take this better lemon than Miss Furnival if you want. Very well. So, your father was a minister then? He was a saint, Colonel. I'm only glad he never lived to see the rudeness and vulgarity of life today. Oh, yes. Rudeness and vulgarity, that's spoken to me. Did I tell you what happened in the china shop last Friday? Oh, no. Well, I was just opening up. I was dusting off the wedge with tea pots. You know, the wedge wood collects the dust, something to shop. And then you should walk in with that ginger hair bit I was telling you about. <laughs> Colonel. I don't think that many people could have said it that well. Oh, 
Now look here, sir. I, I've been extremely patient with you so far, but it's P.E. now. Patience exhausted. If you think I'm going to have my daughter marry a born liar, you're very much mistaken. Daddy, please! Dumpley, please let me handle this. Mary, did he say Mary? Well, that's the general idea. You and this young girlfriend. Are what's laughingly known as engaged. That is, <clears throat> subject to daddy's approval. You sly cat. Uh, we were keeping it a secret, Harold. Evidently, how long has this been going on then? A couple of weeks. Lies, secret of cat. You really know how to keep secrets from yourself, don't you? Well, Harold, we were going to tell you. You were the one person we were going to tell, but you didn't. I didn't mean to, Harold. We just forgot. Oh, well, I thought all these years I was living with a friend. Apparently I'm not. I thought we had more than a geographical closeness. Don't start getting all puppy, Harold. I'm not getting anything. It'll just teach me not to bank on so-called friendships. Silly me again. Silly, stupid, trusting me. Oh, good God, ma'am. Look, Mr. Boyd, we really haven't told anyone. Not one single soul you who. At the moment, Dumpling, there's nothing to tell. And I'm not sure there's going to be. Look, Colonel, it seems that we've gotten off on the wrong foot. If I've done anything to jeopardize that, then I'm sorry. Oh, my father always used to say, to err is human and to forgive divine. I thought that was somebody else. So many people copied him. <laughs> May I help you, Miss Carnival? Oh, no, just getting myself another bit of lemon. That is, if I may, Mr. Miller. Yes, of course, Miss Carnival. Help yourself. Now, look here, sir. Where are you now? I'm right here, Colonel. I'll overlook your damn peculiar behavior this once. But know this, Miller. My daughter is dear to me. You show me you can look after her, and I'll consider the whole thing favorably. I can't say fairer than that, can I? Oh, no, sir. Most fair. Most fair. Well, of course you can look after me, Daddy. His works are going to be world famous. In fact, I'll feel just like Miss Michelangelo. There wasn't Miss Michelangelo, actually. Wasn't there? No. He had probably feelings for a different nature. Really, Mr. Goring? I didn't know that. Look, Harold. It, it seems that I've hurt your feelings. And if I did, then I'm sorry. Oh, well, I don't know if I can contemplate a friendly relationship with a viper. Now come, Mr. Gorin. It really is a case of forgive and forgetting, Pooh. Have another Jeanette in line. Oh, all right. Don't mind if I do. Let me mix it for you. I must say, there's nothing better than having you up with a pretty girl. You haven't even seen me yet. Well, I just know. Friends always have good taste. I've always said to him, he has the same taste as women as I do before. Harold. So you want to be so modest. In fact, it's quite flattering, actually. I saw it on the photo of one of his old bits. And I must say, she was quite stunning in a lousy sort of way. Oh, I'm sure she means to be a... Oh, did you know her, Mr. Goring? Yes. Yes, yeah, so am I speaking out of turn? Oh, no, I, I told Carol all about Leah. What was she like? Oh, Carol, I suppose you hardly remember her. Why shouldn't I? Well, considering it was two years ago. Two, two years? Two years ago! Oh, well, now that you mention it, yes, I remember her perfectly. Well, was she pretty? No, actually, she's all the opposite. <laughs> she wasn't. She was, I remember her perfectly. I'm just giving my opinion. Well, you've never given it before. Well, now since I have been. Yes, she was ugly. She had teeth like a picket fence, yellow and spiky. She had bad skin, like a new pink wallpaper with a gray paper underneath. She had nothing of the kind. She did. I remember it. You knew I never liked her, Brinsley. She That's was it. so tiresomely bohemian. <laughs> 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 Tender, no, beautiful, and 
Amazing and astounding in every single way. You told me she was as cozy as a steel razor blade. Did I? <laughs> Surely not. That doesn't sound to me. Oh, yes, in this very room when I asked you. You said she was a painter, very honest, very clever, and just as bad as cozy as a steel razor blade. Okay, I said it. So bloody what? So nothing. If that boy is untouched, I don't know the meaning of the word. What's all this talk about her being kind and tender all of a sudden? Oh, frankly, I'm talking to you. She could be, just on occasion. Very rare occasions, I imagine. Mm, not so rare. Mm, not so rare at all. Meaning what exactly? <laughs> Difficult. 
My furies are not unknown, sir.
Oh, uh, 500 guineas. Oh. So you want it then? Very much. For 500 guineas? Certainly, if I had it. And you mean you're not broke? <laughs> no, I mean I never had. Now, look, madam, I know millionaires are supposed to be eccentric, I'll but... Tell you, shush! Millionaires? Who do you think I am? Ma'am, you must know who you are. Uh, Miss Baumberger, is this some sort of joke you like to play? That is not my name. It's not? No. My name is Chaponze, Frida Ingrid Chaponze, born in Weimar, 1904. Student of philosophy at Heidelberg, 1934, refugee to this country, 1938, and member ever since with the London Electricity Board. Electricity? <laughs> You're not? Of course she's not. All this time you've come in here giving us a speech about sculpture, and all you are is an electrician here to fix a fuse. I agree with you, <coughs> sir. It's monstrous. It is? Of course it is. You come here, a public servant, and pretend to be dead, and proceed to harangue your employers unasked and uninvited. I was invited. Oh, don't answer back. In my day, you would have been fired on the spot for impertinence. Daddy's absolutely right. Ever since the Beatles, the lower classes think they can behave exactly as they want. Miller, will you kindly show this woman to her work? Sure, it's just this one. they are all doing. Give me that. Come on. Look out, you know. Give me one. All right, so farewell. And if you like the art for these art designs. A little less of your lips, shall we? Thank you. And you, sir. Thank you. Why, you must be 
Miss Clear's father. Oh, no. <laughs> Miss Clear? So you got him at last. Well done, Miss Clear. I never thought you would. Not after four years. Uh oh. <laughs> well, forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, sir, but you must admit you take a long time proposing. Four years is a long time to be courting one woman. Uh, Mrs. Puddit, please. Um, four years? Well, yes, dear, it's been all about a bit more, hasn't it? And it's just my nick of time, really. I mean, it was getting a bit prominent, your one in the other. Oh! Not that that's the reason he asked the question. I mean, of course it's not. He's always been stuck on you. He told me one week ago, not in this very room. Mrs. Putty says, as far as I'm concerned, please, at the top of the heap for me. Well, what about that debutante bit Carol you're always telling me about? Oh, her? She's just a bit of Nightbridge candy floss. A couple of licks and you batter. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, did you say four years, madam? Why, yes, sir, in this room. Oh, I know that voice. That's clear. Leah? Leah? Oh, <laughs> I don't understand anything. It's a really odd room, isn't it? Like a magic dark room where everything happens the wrong way round. Daily comes at night, rain falls indoors, and turns in minutes a nice maid into a nasty mistress. Would you just shut up already? At last, a real word of protest. Have you finished lying then? Have you eaten the last crumb of humble pie? Oh, you coward, you bloody coward. Just because you didn't want to marry me, did you have to settle for this lot? Marry? Marry? Four years of meeting to end in this triviality with this nothing we know as and her daddy do. Stop her, for God's sake. On how on earth would you suggest I do that? So where's all that bloody resource you keep talking about? Oh, Carol. Okay, it's all right now. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Are you sure that's your daughter's hand you're holding, Colonel? Um, Carol, isn't this your hand? No. <laughs> you must have lived with your daughter for well over 20 years. What a remarkable use you've made of your eyes. All right. My kinky game time. Let's play Guess the Hand. Oh, God. <laughs> or would you rather play Guess the Teeth, Harold? Who has teeth like a picket fence? Oh, how disgusting. Well, that's me, dear queen. Disgusty poo. All right. Now, who is that? I don't know. Guess. I don't know, and I don't care. Oh, come on, have a go. Well, it's, it's Bryn. You can't trick me like that. It's Brinsley's stupid hand. It's not. It's mine. It's not. You're, you're lying. I'm not. I don't lie. You're lying. You're lying. Now, you try it, Harold. I'm not playing your stupid bloody game. Oh, come on. Well, who's that? Brinsley? Uh, how does he know that? How does he know your hand and I don't? Carol, just calm down. Now answer me. I want to know. Just stop it, Carol. I won't. Look, you're getting off hysterical. Leave me alone. I want to go home. Cars, <laughs> cars. Why are cars in the supermarket filled with babies and bottles? They aim at you on purpose <laughs> and no help from anyone. Pink stamps, green stamps, free balloons. <laughs> and the godless ones, heathens in helmets, laughing me to scorn. Verily, I say, there shall be an end to sneering. He will dash their helmets to the ground. Keep up, me! Keep up! Keep up! Oh, oh, where is it? I think it's time we go home. Oh, you're right. Ah, uh, please excuse me, Mr. Miller, but your millionaire is importantly late. Sir. Very much. Anytime. You had absolutely no right. No? You walked out on me. Is that what I did? You said you never wanted to see me again. I never saw you at all. You should live in the dark, Brinsley. It's your natural element. Whatever that means. It means that you don't really want to be seen. And why is that, Brinsley? Do you think if someone really saw you, they would never love you? Oh, just go away. I want to know. Yes, Leah, you want to know. You always just want to know. Until you find out what it is, you just keep pick, pick, picking away. And why is that, Leah? Perhaps because I care about it. Well, you. perhaps there's nothing to care about other than some fake artist. Oh, stop pitying yourself. That's always your vice. I told you when I met you that you could either be a good artist or a chic fake. 
And you didn't like it because I refused to just give you applause. Oh, God knows you certainly did that. Is that what she gives you? 20 hours of ego massage every day? Well, you know what? At least our relationship together isn't a replica of the Holy Inquisition. I never had an affair with you. It was just four years of Noki with Torquemada. And don't say you didn't enjoy it. Oh, enjoy it. I hated absolutely every second of it. Yes, I remember. Every second. I recall. Whenever you left for Finland, it was the happiest day of my life. Mine too. I went out dancing that very night. As did I, out the ladder of the timber. Well, that's just awesome. Super. Duper. Good. Well, I'm just so glad to see you filled with joy. You too. Radiant with happiness. <laughs> no doubt. This is very funny to you both. Well, it, it is quite actually. I, for one, am not as easily amused. Now, look here, Colonel. Uh, hold your tongue, sir. I'm talking. Do you know what would have happened to a young man in my day who dared to treat a woman the same way you treated my dumpling? Well, I assume. Yeah. Hold your tongue, sir. I'm talking. Leave it, Daddy. Let's just go home. Dumpling, please let me handle this. So, Carol, I can explain everything. What the hell's to explain? All the time I've been in here, she's been in the background. What were you doing, weighing us up? Here. What? Your rape. Take the bloody thing back. <laughs> oh, very well, madam. Miller, I have a question. Do you know what would have happened to a young man like you in my day? Happened, sir. <laughs> you would have been thrashed, sir. Thrashed, sir. <laughs> oh, that's it. You'd have felt the 